And here comes Taz. Again, never seen anything like this before. In all the time I've had him, he has never wanted to come out of his cage ever. <laughs> Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible for you that have been opining for BHB. You're gonna get your fill today because I'll be at BHB a lot today. We will check in at the Reptarium for sure. What an absolutely gorgeous pod. And you may ask yourself, Brian, why are you holding that pod? Well, today we're gonna actually be doing ultrasound. I promised you guys that yesterday. And I'll not only explain what we're doing, but I'll explain why we're doing it and keep on moving. Hopefully with any luck, a bunch of these females will have some nice follicle growth and I'll explain what that means let's go ahead and get started before we get started let's just go ahead and talk about what an ultrasound is this happens to be an ultrasound CTS 3300 there are all kinds of different ultrasounds they can start as low as a thousand dollars this particular one I think was about 13 14 maybe 15 thousand I don't really remember regardless they actually use high frequency sound waves to actually bounce an echo off an image inside of a body and then actually you can see the image right here so what we're doing is actually looking for the actual follicles and what we start by doing is finding the gallbladder which is a big black spot you guys are going to see that in a minute and then right off of that you're going to see the overduct and that's actually where the follicles grow and develop and all of that type of stuff regardless we use this gel right here which just helps the sound waves actually move through a little bit better and that's about it so there's no radiation there's nothing that can actually harm an animal so that is what an ultrasound is let's go ahead get Kelsey and we'll start ultrasounding so we're going to start with this Mojave ball python a nice big female ball python and essentially again what I'm doing is I'm just going kind of two-thirds the way down their body and I'm looking for well in this case I found some really big follicles but typically what I'll do is I'll look for a big black splotch which is actually the gallbladder and then I follow the line down after that but this girl has some nice big follicles in her right now so let's go ahead and see what they are there is and I just basically measure from side to side they're 18 millimeters so basically what happens again at about one centimeter which is 10 millimeters that's usually kind of the jumping off point when you want to start breeding ball pythons and they typically grow anywhere from from like one to five millimeters per week. Ultimately, you stop breeding at about 35 to 40 millimeters and then they actually ovulate. So we have a ways to go. So the fact that she's at 18 millimeters is amazing. She has been bred twice, which is pretty cool as well. Next up is a pied. And again, I can kind of just see with the way the body shape is. This doesn't have a lot of body weight, even though it's been feeding, it hasn't been feeding as aggressively as it is. It hasn't been bred at all. So again, with the fact that the triggers with not feeding really well and not breeding, basically those are two of the three triggers, right? I highly doubt this is going to have much follicles in it. And then I'm looking and we'll see what we have. Yeah, again, you know, probably about eight or nine millimeter follicles. So she's probably not quite ready. Oftentimes, once they do reach that 10 or 12 millimeters, get bred, then they start feeding really well. And then you kind of complete the loop of all three of those triggers. And then hopefully you have success. Taking a quick break from the ultrasound, because obviously when we're breeding snakes and producing snakes, we have to sell snakes if you get to be. So I'm going to help Lori pack a few things, starting with this absolutely gorgeous female Syrinamba. We didn't actually produce this animal, but they're doing really well. And oh my gosh, are they incredible. Just take a look at this little monkey. And then there's actually a male Syrinam red tail ball going out too. And if you remember when I unpacked it, this was one of the ones I was like, oh, I should really keep it because it has those connecting saddles that look so amazing. Now on to the ball pythons and oh, doggy, that thing is gorgeous. This is actually a super pastel calico ball python. Oh my God, that is a gorgeous snake. This next one is actually a champagne or a champagne pinstripe. You know, the champagne gene is a pretty overpowering gene, but it does some really cool things. So it's a powerhouse animal to have, especially when you start mixing into certain things that get really high ringers on them. And she stuff is amazing. So there you go, a champagne. I absolutely love this girl. This is that Puma ball python that is just so weird. Now she is a really nice sized animal. I would suspect that she has some follicles. Until we check, we never really quite know. But they're definitely not big follicles. I mean, these guys have about maybe eight millimeter follicles. So she still has a way to go for that. We just got to feed her, continue to try to get males in with the breeding. Cause again, sometimes the breeding can spur follicle growth and then ultimately spur feeding. And then you start to have good success. Now this girl's a big fire. She's got some really good body weight. So hopefully that means that she'll have some follicles in here. Oh yeah, there they are. Look at that. Woo, that's nice. That's what I wish every animal would have. Let's go ahead and measure these up. And we got 15 millimeter follicles. Uh, that's well on the way. This is actually a cinnabee, which is a cinnamon and a spider mix. And actually another cinnabee female going out. So that's two going out. They're absolutely wonderful. And then we have a pied going out. This one's got a really interesting marking right here. Look, it almost goes like, ooh. 
it almost goes like halfway down. It's a little bit of a smiley face, a little bit, but it's just strange that that circle has actually got two different toes, and it's a little feisty monkey. Again, this is a GHI Mojave right here, which is just absolutely one of my favorite types of snake. She's definitely a smaller animal, so probably not much going on, but maybe just the start. And sure enough, that's what I expected, about eight millimeter follicles. So, and if we put another 100, 200 grams on her, good chances they'll grow to 10 plus, start breeding, and then we're good to go. Here's the forever and always popular banana ball pythons. Again, I always say we just can't get enough of these guys. They're just so amazing. I actually remember when we hatched this, this is a double head albino clown. It was an albino clown male that was bred to a het clown female. Produced some clowns that were het for albino and so on like that. So that's a pretty animal. And then another male banana ball python. And then we packed that super pastel calico. This would be the other version of calico, which of course is a sugar ball python. And a lot of people feel that the sugars are just a little bit higher expression of white. Uh, some can be that way. This one is absolutely beautiful. All that pink is gonna eventually turn into white. And finally, ooh doggy, this is beautiful. This is actually a pastel sugar. So again, just like the other one being a sugar, this just has the pastel gene on it and is absolutely gorgeous. So there are a lot of really beautiful snakes that are going out to new homes. I hope everyone that gets these will absolutely love them. We sure do appreciate all your support. Now, back to ultrasounding. Next up, we actually have an Enchi Pastavi, which is a pastel, a Mojave, and of course an Enchi. Let's see what she's got going on, if anything. Yeah, just little tiny ones, about seven millimeters or so. And basically what we've got going on is this is what I call our baseline, right? So once we ultrasound everything, we know where they're at. Then three, four weeks from now, five weeks, whenever we decide to ultrasound again, we see if they start growing. Growth is gonna tell us that we need to breed more, not breed more, you know, when we can shelf an animal, so on like that. And this girl is beautiful. I hope this girl goes. This is actually a pastel lesser clown ball python being bred to a pastel leopard clown. So, oh my gosh, I hope that she goes. but. But she's still small. She's about eight, nine millimeters, so very much in the early stage of breeding, but uh, she looks fantastic. What we have here is a banana spinner, which is just a banana, a pinstripe, and a spider. Let's see what she's got going on. Little guys, I mean, nothing too major. About seven millimeter follicles right there. So again, in the very early stages, you know, and I noticed that like groups of animals will typically do about the same. Almost like if a female is growing follicles, females around her grow follicles. So when you hit a patch that are all like seven, eight, seems like that whole patch will be seven or eight. Just kind of an interesting observation I've had over the years. Next up, we have this nice spider girl. And the fact that she kind of looks a little bit light in the way she's going, I'm assuming this is gonna have some follicles in her. You can kind of just tell overall if an animal does and sure enough right as I suspected nice big follicles and again that's just years of seeing these animals and measuring follicles and all that other stuff you can actually see when an animal looks like it's expanding this one has 17 millimeter follicles I had to take a break from that kind of boring ultrasounding I'm not gonna lie to you as much as it's exciting to know what's going on it's you know there's not a lot of excitement when you're ultrasounding stuff unless you find big follicles so I figured if I'm bored uh, come talk to these guys yeah. you guys are always exciting what's your action pack today we did our annual our annual by uh, meaning monthly, I would say. <laughs> what? I don't that wouldn't be. That would saying. be monthly, not annual. Yeah, yeah. but I want to change the definition of old English. You know, I'm gonna jazz it up a little bit. I don't know. I don't. I still don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we did our annual, if you will, reptile morph guessing game. It's where wait. You guys haven't done good. that for a while. I know. That's it's been a year. It's been about a year, right? I, Has no it been? way. It's no I way. Oh no, because uh, no. Taz when I fed Taz. Oh, out of my mouth. What was that? Four or five months? Maybe ago? six. Maybe speaking half a year. speaking of Taz, I want to go over and show you guys Taz in a minute. But go ahead, keep going with your story. So we did that morph guessing game, and then also I kind of hijacked Eric's brain and made him do something that he wow didn't that's want true. to oh, do. Mind tricks? Yeah, do it's like that the mind like trick thing. That stuff is trippy. There was that show that was like on Science Channel or something like that. That yeah. stuff freaks oh, me I out. I think I see it. Yeah, yeah. That stuff freaks me like out. That. So, yeah. so you yeah. guys can check out the antics. Uh, what was the penalty if you guys lost on the, the game? Well, just say somebody. I'm not gonna spoil it, but somebody or something had to eat some meal. Somebody or something. That's what we're gonna say. And by that, probably Eric. Maybe. Probably Eric. Maybe. Someone was a poor sport. <laughs> okay, all right, I, I, I'm gonna get back to my boring life, but I do wanna show you Tazzy, he's acting really weird. Here's the deal, I've had Taz for a year now, an entire year, so we've had him through every season and everything else, and I thought that I really understood this animal. To be totally honest with you, he's a pretty lazy lizard. I mean, he just kinda hangs out like this, doesn't do a whole lot and stuff like that. Today, 
he was going crazy. He was all over the cage. I've never seen anything like it. And typically when I let him out on the ground over here, he'll walk around in like maybe a circle one, two times, and then right back to the cage. Today, he was all over the place. He wouldn't go back in his cage. He walked all the way around the entire Reptarium. And then when I put him back, he was clawing to get out again. Tassie, what is going on, buddy? What is your deal? I mean, he just doesn't ever act like this. It is so bizarre. I don't know if it's the weather because it's really warm outside right now or what the deal is, but it is crazy. I just thought I would share with you. Tassie, what is going on, buddy? And here comes Taz. Again, never seen anything like this before. In all the time I've had him, he has never wanted to come out of his cage, ever. He has always wanted to just hang out and just do nothing, and here he goes. Look at him. What? I don't even understand what's happening here. Tazzy, what is going on? I mean, I know he's starting to get closer and closer to maturity. I don't know if it's a mating thing. Maybe he's like looking for a female. I don't know, but I've never seen him move that fast the entire year I've had him. Look at, he is on a mission. There he goes. Bye, Taz. Bye, bud. Have fun. But before I get back to my boring ultrasound, if anyone has any experience with tegus, and tell me what you think is going on, because I honestly have no clue. And I know I talk about like the boringness of an ultrasound. I always tell people like it's not that it's boring to us. I mean, we're excited to see things grow and follicles producing, and then eventually eggs. I mean, this is all the process that it goes through. What I'm really trying to do is help you guys understand the thought process behind breeding ball pythons, and it really equates to every other snake as well. You can see here, we'll mark breeding, right? So this one bred. January 10th and it's 14 millimeters. This one bred January 24th, 21 millimeters. That's basically the triggers that I'm always talking about. When you start to get breeding, it triggers follicle growth and then as follicles grow, it triggers breeding, which also triggers more food going on. Typically females will go off of food at about 22 to 25 millimeters, but from 10 to 25, they really get aggressive about eating. Because again, I always talk about calories in production out. So if there's a lot of food being had, then there's a lot of production to be had. Let's break it down this way. If you're a female snake in the wild and there's abundance of food, your mind is gonna say, I can produce eggs because my babies are gonna have a lot of food. On the other side, if you're a female snake and there's hardly any food, chances are you're not gonna produce because your babies are gonna hatch and then they're gonna potentially starve to death. So that's kind of the way we think when we're actually doing these triggers, when we're wanting to trigger not only breeding, follicle growth, and food consumption. So more or less, we're gonna go through and just ultrasound all the females. It'll probably take about three or four hours to go through everything. But uh, just checking this female pastel yellow belly right now. And I tell you what, it's actually really exciting just to kind of see things going. And listen, you don't need an ultrasound machine if you want to be successful breeding snakes. That's not what it's all about. But the deal is, is it's just another tool that helps me try to figure out when to breed animals and when not to. Ooh, she's a cheeky little monkey, isn't she? And it looks like this girl's at about 13 millimeters, which is really good. So rather than bore you anymore, I am going to go ahead and just continue to ultrasound. If you have any questions, go down in the comments. I'll be happy to go through the comment section and answer anything you might have about these guys. Night Fury just shed and oh my god take a look at that snake and the iridescence on that thing. Woo doggy! Every time it sheds and grows it gets more and more insane. I am blown away by the snake. And these guys, the motley golden chows, actually get darker and darker as they grow. So he is just getting more and more black. What an absolutely incredible snake. Then on the polar opposite spectrum, Casper just shed too. Oh my God, he looks incredible as well. Just look at how gorgeous that snake is right there. Again, I think it's amazing that we have this just stark, pure white reticulated python and then that jet black reticulated python as well. What an amazing contrast. And again, my buddy Jay over at Prehistoric Crets is really the one that inspired me to do this. He has a white one and a black one and I always thought, oh my God, I'm so jealous. So now it's awesome to have them. And the fact that they shed the exact same day is pretty incredible. With that said, guys, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog and kind of just leave it where it is. Let me know if you like the ultrasound stuff. Are you interested in it? Do you want me to talk more about the intricacies of breeding snakes and all those things that I've kind of learned over the last 30 years. Again, I want to kind of edutain you, so to speak, right? I want to educate you, but I also want to entertain you. So let me know. I just don't want you guys to stop watching because you're thinking it's boring because I love you guys so much and I wish you an amazing day, evening, whenever you happen to be watching. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here? Can you smash that like button? Turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video, which is every single day at nine o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Make a comment down below because I love reading about your beautiful 
beautiful faces, be kind to someone, and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.